He said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that people would be having sexual intercourse in public like donkeys. Thumma radadnahu asfala safilin. I don't think we're far from that. That's just around the corner. People having sexual intercourse in public like donkeys. What more do you want to wake you up? That this is the last age. And therefore we must go to the Quran for the guidance. How do we preserve our faith in this age? Because tomorrow we'll be in the grave. And your husband can't help you. And your wife can't help you. And nobody can help you. You're going to be alone. All alone in the grave. You have to answer. And if you thought you had Islam with you, but you did not, it's gone, it's finished. What are you going to do in the grave? He said that men would dress like women. And women would dress like men. Ever saw a woman going to work with a jacket and the trousers and the tie? I don't need to speak anymore. He prophesied it. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He said that women would comb their hair with a style like the hump of a camel. Huh? I saw it a couple of times. He said that religious knowledge would disappear. Why would religious knowledge disappear? Perhaps because the true scholars of Islam are silenced, are imprisoned, are banned, are killed, and pseudo-scholars replace them. He said that people will no longer care for the distinction between halal and haram. In our fundraising today, brother, just write the check. We don't care how you got your money, just write the check. Not yesterday. Yesterday when we were children, a man who used to lend money on interest, if he invited us to his home for a meal, we wouldn't eat in his home. That was yesterday. And if he came with a bag full of money to donate it to the masjid, we'd say, sorry, we don't want your money. But today, just write the check. So the distinction between halal and haram would disappear. He said the time will move swiftly. A whole year will pass like a month, a month like a week, a week like a day, etc. Why would there be the perception of time moving faster and faster? If you go in a tikaf, Oh yes, you'd know why. Itikaf is when you go in the masjid and you make the intention not to leave the masjid for a certain amount of time. Like the last ten days of Ramadan. Or you could go in the masjid at Maghrib, just before Maghrib, and make itikaf until Fajr, or from Fajr until Maghrib. The perception that time is moving faster and faster is because Allah is no longer in the heart. The dunya takes control of the heart. Greed, greed for the money of the world takes roots in the heart and captures the heart. And so time moves faster and faster. But as you go into a tikaf and you stay in the masjid, suddenly time is moving so slowly, slowly. So you will begin to understand yourself why. We live in an age of materialism and therefore an age when the dunya is penetrating the heart. He said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that there will be universal prevalence of harj. He mounted a, a rooftop in Medina, he looked out and he said, I see harj falling on your rooftops like raindrops. They said, O Messenger of Allah, what is harj? He said, killing, slaughter, murder, that harj. And so when you see killing every day on your newspaper, every day on the front pages of the newspaper, killing and slaughter and murder, hard, you know that Nabi Muhammad prophesied that it would come. Indeed, he said that the killing would be so random, so random, so senseless, that the killer would not know why he was killing. And the one who was killed would not know why he was killed. It's here, before our eyes, right now. 
He said of that age that nothing will remain of Islam but the name. We can see it now. It's going away from us. Islam is leaving. And the project of the Muslim village is meant to preserve Islam. He said that nothing would remain of the Quran but the traces of the writing. Meaning, the Quran is in the world. But no one studies it. They read it for the dead. Quran Khwani. But no one studies the Quran. No one goes to the Quran for guidance from the Quran. No one goes to the Quran that the Quran may explain to them the world in which they live today. Rather, the Quran is recited mechanically. May Allah bless those in this country who teach the Quran. Khairukum man ta'allama al-Quran wa allama. The best of you, said the Messenger of Allah. Better than he who is driving a Mercedes. The best of you. Better than he who is living by Gulf, Gulf View is it called? The best of you is the one who studies the Quran and who teaches the Quran. He said that the Masajid, plural of Masjid, the Masajid would be grand structures, iron and steel, multi-million dollar buildings. Yesterday, was mud walls and carrot roofs. Today, a multi-million dollar building. The masajid will be grand structures but devoid of guidance. And he said that the ulama, the religious scholars, the maulanas, the muftis, the sheikhs, of those people who have nothing of Islam but the name and are comfortable with it, those Maulanas and Muftis and Sheikhs would be the worst people beneath the sky. From them will come that which would be fitna for a community, subjecting a people to great tests and trials and corrupting them. And they would become the centers of fitna because they betray Islam. He spoke about the prevalence of riba. Riba? Borrowing and lending money on interest or transactions to which people are ripped off. He said the time will come when you would not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who would not be consuming riba. And whosoever claims that he is not consuming riba, verily the dust of riba would reach him. Verily the vapor of riba would reach him. Today, very clearly, riba has taken control of the economy around the world. And then he said, and this is a hadith al-Qudsi, it is the word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is transmitted to the Prophet, alayhi salatu waslam, of that age of Gog and Magog, the 999 out of every 1,000 will enter into the hellfire. If that is not enough to wake us up, what will wake us up? When these signs appear, then we know that we live in a world which will continue to decline, growing worse and worse, more and more violent, more and more corrupt, more and more godless. In other words, when these signs appear, we know that we are on board a ship which is sinking and there is nothing that we can do or the PNM or the UNC which can prevent that ship from sinking. If we are on board a ship which is sinking and we cannot prevent it from sinking, what should we do? How? Should we respond? Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran gives us the guidance through which the believers can respond. And that is that they should, they, they should search for such places where they can escape with their faith and they can have safety for their faith. The time will come 
said Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, when a man would have to flee to the mountain sides where rain falls and take with him some sheep and goats in order to preserve his faith. When that time comes, he says, if you have land, hold on to your land. If you have animals, hold on to your animals. And then a companion asks, O Messenger of Allah, what about if I do not have land and I do not have animals? And what should we do? He said, sharpen your sword because it's slavery. You're going to be enslaved. 